What's up guys, my name's Cucumber Feet and I have high energy because I'm doing a YouTuber intro. This is so stupid. Just yesterday, as I'm recording this, OpenAI, the parent company of ChatGPT, had a little, a little keynote, a little keynote presentation to demonstrate the new powerful powers of ChatGPT. 4.0. If you're unaware, we are currently on the GPT 3.5 model. So this is a significant step up in uh, performance and capability. I'm just gonna say off rip, there's no release date on like a public open beta for GPT-4 uh, that's out in the wild right now. They did mention that ChatGPT as of now will be available to People that subscribe to, I think it's called GPT Plus, their subscription model is like 20 bucks a month. It's not really, that subscription model is not really geared to the public. It's more for uh, developers and people that want to explore ChatGPT on more of a professional level. But with no further ado, why don't we just jump into this keynote, the first thing I want to talk about here. So um, just in case if you're confused, because I actually didn't really know what this was until I had to do a little research on it. So what the, he's looking at here on screen, uh, it looks drastically different than what's been open to the public in the ChatGPT 3.5 beta. This is uh, OpenAI Playground. Uh, this actually is um, open to the public, but it works on a token system at the moment. So if you're thinking the, the UI, the user interface is getting this gra graphical overhaul for, for uh, GPT-4, uh, that is not the case, or at least that's not something they've shown to the public. Then, uh, this is where we start getting into like the meat and potatoes. So what he inputs here at the top is basically, it's just this. This is like a, a blog post that they had a little more detail than the actual YouTube video goes into about what GPT-4 is going to be and what its capabilities are. He inputs that into the input box and then says, summarize, tells GPT-4 to summarize the article into a sentence where every word begins with the letter G. I mean, it just kind of gives like, it's not really like a coherent sentence that's legible by a human. It kind of just, it's almost like it gave like a point form. So the next interesting thing to me was um, what he did with another blog post. So he took another blog post um, about like, another company putting out a blog post about their product that's in like a similar realm to ChatGPT. Uh, and he basically asked, you know, find one common theme between, between this article and the GTP, GT, GPT-4 blog. God damn it, I can't talk. One common theme between the Pinecone article, this is the one he just put in, and the GPT blog post before, that's the one that he has to get summarized with different letters, uh, is focusing on making advanced technology more accessible and user-friendly for, de for developers and users. So it's able to take like large amounts of text or, or blog posts, let's say, and like reference them against each other. So if you're someone like a student doing research, uh, this could be very crucial, which is definitely like a super useful tool. Uh, but this is all fluff. Why don't we get into the meat and potatoes? Like basically the next part. So he essentially just gives it some Python code uh, to create a Discord uh, API, like a Discord uh, bot rather using an API. So he spits that code into uh, Jupyter, which will kind of uh, make sure it's it's basically like a, a validator, just making sure everything is formatted correctly so it could be implemented as a Discord bot. So now, as you can see, like in his private uh, Discord server, he has now added GPT-4 to this server as a Discord bot. So now you're able to interact with it in chat. I think this is like a huge advance, but the fact that you're able to do this and there's so many like applications that this would be applicable to. Applicable to. And then we go into like the next big revelation of GPT-4 that um, it is now not only a language text based model, it is now going to be multimedia. If you've been fortunate enough to use uh, Bing, Bing's AI bot, what I don't even remember what, I think it's just called Bing Chat. Bing is using GPT-4, so, uh, G so Bing Chat has been, you've been able to like read images and videos to some extent, but now they're showing it here in the actual uh, like GPT-4 product. Uh, so he just throws in like, uh, he took a screenshot of a screen, threw it into the Discord server. So he asked GPT, can you describe this image in painstaking detail? And there you go, you see GPT then spits back a response, just basically describing everything uh, that I could see in the actual image. It was able to uh, ascertain that it was inside of a Discord server. So GPT-4 will now have the ability to 
uh, read and uh, determine things based off not just text prompts, but also image prompts. And this eventually will be rolled out to video as well. I know in the blog post it mentions that the image stuff is not going to be released right away when GTP, GPT-4 is released. That's a feature that's going to come later down the line, but it is something that will be released to the general public sooner rather than later. And then finally, uh, from the actual video, is probably like the, the craziest thing that he was able to do with GPT-4. Uh, so basically right here, as you could see, can I zoom in? There you go. He has like a hand-drawn picture of a website. It's like, you know, a very, very basic website. Um, really not much to it, but he drew out basically a website, what he would like his single web page to look like. So what he does is he drew that in, on a piece of paper and then sets that down, takes his phone out, takes a picture of that piece of paper. And now because GPT-4 is inside Discord as a Discord bot, he uploads that picture to the Discord and then asks GPT-4, can you make a website out of this photo of a hand-drawn image that I made? GPT-4 then spit back, spits back some code. Again, the code is very basic This because this site is very basic. And then he takes that code and throws it into like a, you know, a website builder. And there you go. I mean, the web, again, very, very basic, but the website is right there. Like this is one of the craziest fucking things to me. The, the idea that he was able to go from something physical in the real world, like a hand-drawn image, and then go to now like a viable digital asset that people could access online. Completely like mind-blowing. Granted, of course, this is also very simple, but you know, this is really giving people a peek into what technology is going to be able to do five, five years from now, 10 years from now. Like the idea that um, this is just like this stepping stone, really uh, almost crude method of doing this right now. But then like you extrapolate that and, you know, technology tends to grow exponentially. Like it's almost unfathomable what technology is going to or like how technology is going to be able to integrate within our lives within the, the next five years. Oh, and then like the last like little bit that he did here uh, was basically he just took like tax code and just threw in tax code. So like here's this very complicated piece set of instructions, how to do taxes and wherever he's living, probably somewhere in California and uh, then said, all right, well, now here's all the information that you know you might need to do my taxes and then just did his taxes for him not obviously his it was example data but like that's fucking crazy so that was the gpt uh, live stream that they did then they also released this um article blog post whatever you want to call it on their website openai.com so this actually goes into much more depth and covers a lot of things that weren't covered in the video as well. Uh, first thing, when they're talking about the capabilities of it, there it was a dramatic improvement in test taking. If you're unaware, GPT 3.5 um, had been given things like the bar exam, the exam that lawyers have to pass, as well as the SATs. A litany of exams were given to GPT 3.5 and it had varying levels of success dependent upon, uh, dependent upon the exam. But like performance, as you can see, performance in green is GPT-4, GPT-3.5 is in the dark blue, uh, has like drastically improved. It is so much better. So as you can see, I mean like GPT-4 finished the bar exam, completed the bar exam, passed the bar exam in the 90th, per 90th percentile, while GPT-3.5 passed it in the 10th percentile. So like a like that's like an 80% increase. That's wild stuff. And I mean, across the board, pretty much it's like output performed itself. Also, they've been feeding it into Azure Translate, a translation app, uh, and like it's also seen drastic improvements across many different languages as well. This goes a little more in depth into um, its ability to like read images, which is pretty cool. So like this image, for instance, um, it, I mean, it's just like a dumb, really like low, 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 it's a low tier meme, but it's basically like a VGA cable. If you don't know what that is, it's a cable that you would use to plug in a CRT computer monitor ages ago. Um, it, it's being plugged into an iPhone and then it shows a picture of the lightning cable poking out the VGA cord. So, you know, the user asks what is funny about this image and then it was able to ascertain that obviously this isn't supposed to be plugged into an iPhone. Like it was able to identify every object in this image and 
at, realize like, oh yeah, the, this is why it's funny is because this doesn't go into that. And then this is put like, it's pretty crazy. So this section here dives into steerability, which I kind of mentioned a bit before, but this is the idea and probably the most concerning to me that you'll be able to like customize ChatGPT to your liking. Um, so you could have it like talk to you in a manner that's more suitable to your personality, but also in a context sense, like we saw before and you know you'd want it to act more like a uh, you know a software developing ai uh, they give some examples here where this one you want it to like act like a tutor so not actually give you the answers and if you ask it for the answers uh you know just tell me the answer please he's like i understand you want the direct answer but my purpose is to like help guide you through it and have you like critically think your way out of it instead of just giving you the answers the most concerning part to me is this right here where they say, uh, system messages allow API users to significant, significantly customize their user experience within bounds. Uh, we will keep making improvements here and particularly known that the system messages are, easiest, are the easiest way to jailbreak the current model, i.e. the adherence to the bounds is not perfect, but we encourage you to try it out and let us know what you think. And then when you click, on uh, what's considered inside the bounds, that is their usage policy. This isn't like a, a hot take, maybe it is, but you know, it's something I've seen floating around many, many places on the internet and people talking about this. The, uh, you know, the idea that um, ChatGPT or OpenAI, the company, is owned by Microsoft. So they basically, they're, they're infused with diversity and inclusion and all that, right? It's the idea that if you ask, ChatGPT, oh, write me a joke about Donald Trump. Two seconds, but then you ask it, write me a joke about Joe Biden. It's like, whoa, that's not, pff, I'm not, I can't do that. Like the only way a human can understand that an idea is bad is for them to explore the idea and realize, oh, this is like a, a dumb thing to think. Which gets fleshed out a little more in the risk and mitigation section where they mention, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, using context and, and feedback from, you know, experts such as AI alignment risk, cybersecurity, bio risk, trust and safety. Um, so yeah, it's things like that that really kind of worry me. I think overall, large language model AIs are going to be a net positive for society as like these great tools that people could use to um, take care of a lot of like menial tasks. But I think just like using Google in 2023, it, it just, it sucks. Google sucks. It's just so overly corporatized and, you know, layered with all these ads. And it's, as a user, as far as like user experience goes, it's just terrible to use. Try searching any controversial topic on Google and you just won't find any like actual search results that are relevant to you. So I think the same thing's going to happen with ChatGPT, where it's going to take other uh, smaller players in the game to have like these open source models that um, are just more free and open with the type of information that you can receive. Listen, is it so much to ask that my version of ChatGPT be like a moody teenager that's constant, that barely even gives me information that doesn't want to give me the, doesn't want to give me the answers that I'm asking it. It just ends up getting into arguments with me because it thinks it's smarter than me. Then I have to dunk on it with my superior adult intellect into submission so it could finally give me the answer of whether or not it's possible to harness my farts into energy to power my home. Yep. <laughs>